All praise to the Most High, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom, Israel. Um, this lesson is called Replacement Theology. Uh, the reason why I'm laughing is because I'm making this video because I'm fed up with the Replacement Theology theory, right? Um, one thing that got me upset is this dumb broad right here. Take a look. Hey guys, so uh, the Lord wanted me to come on here to put these black folks to shame once more because they're constantly, but then again, God made them blind um, and uh, with the spirit of stupor, so they don't know what's going on. Because remember, he told me that um, that he would gather them all together like sheaves on the threshing floor. Remember that? So that's why they're all coming out now and he's gathering them together so he could put a beat down on them. But anyways, for everyone else, uh, I preached about this before, you know, but now that, you know, all these black folks rising up and talking about their, the Israelites, this is what God says. A person is not a Jew who is one only outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the Spirit, so the Holy Spirit. Not by the written code, such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. So you see, literally the real Jews, I am the spiritual Israel, New Jerusalem, when Jesus came to the earth. I mean, if y'all are the chosen Israelites, y'all should know this by now. When Jesus came to the earth, God the Father established a new covenant and everyone who now belongs to the new covenant are born of the Spirit. A Jew and Gentile are no longer considered in the fleshly form, even though you black folks are neither, not uh, the Israel, I, I, Hebrew Israelites, nor the Jews in Israel, because they also are going through, uh, going by the Torah. And it is only through getting born again through the Spirit so enough so first off she read a watered down version of romans 229 so let's get into it all right now first off i want to say this i want to read this verse this is john 14 and verse 26 and it says but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever have i said unto you now you know you can tell that these people uh people like her don't believe in the messiah um they don't read the messiah's words nor do they care for the messiah's words because if they did they will remember what the messiah said and i'm going to show you what the messiah said concerning this topic okay so <laughs> first let's read romans 229 about the inward jew right so romans 229 and it says but he is a jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of god right so again but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. Did not the Messiah speak of this? Let's get it. This is Matthew chapter 23 and verse 5. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. So, what the Messiah is saying is that these Jews, which is only like one third of Israel, if you really think about it, 12 tribes, Jews were the southern kingdom, the house of Judah, and not the rest of the tribes. So you have a, a certain amount of Israel, which was the Pharisees and the scribes, right? These people were wearing their garments, they were wearing their fringes and everything, their beard and everything, looking all good in public, but inwardly, they were ravishing wolves. Let's get more. This is Matthew 23, same chapter, 
verse 24 to 26. And it says, Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Why are they hypocrites? Right here. For ye make clean the outside, right? Ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within, within, inwardly, they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within, within, circumcision of the heart, that the cup that would, thou blind Pharisees, cleanse that, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So this has nothing to do with spiritual Israel. You see, the problem is, is that nobody knows the scriptures, especially some dumb bra like this. Um, if you check her Instagram, she has no right, no right whatsoever quoting scripture because her inside and her outside is filthy. So the, the whole point of Romans 2.29 is to say, it's not saying you could be a spiritual Israel. It's saying that the Pharisees, they had filthy insides, their minds, their hearts, everything was filthy about them. They made the outside look good, but inwardly they were corrupt. This is what Romans 2.29 is talking about. But if you leave it up to this Moabite or whatever she is, she would never, ever, ever understand scriptures. What she is doing, though, is proving that Christianity has blinded the people. The Christianity has given the people a false interpretation of the scriptures um, according to their ideology, right? According to stupidity. All right. Now, since this is about replacement theology and I'm, I'm coming and swinging, right? I want to get into heirs in Christ. If you know your scriptures, you know where I'm going. Galatians 3, 28 and 29, right? So let's see. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, pause, right? Let's stop. It says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Does it say there is neither Jew nor Greek nor Asian nor Egyptian? No, it just says Jew or Greek. Now, let's. why is it saying neither Jew nor Greek? And that's it. It's not mentioning nobody else. Okay. First, if you read the book of Maccabees, chapter 6, Maccabees, Maccabees, second Maccabees chapter six, you would see where these, um, Hebrew Israelites were considered Gentiles and they were considered Greeks because they couldn't, as a matter of fact, let's just get it. All right. Um, second Maccabees, this is second Maccabees and I'm gonna get it later on too, but I want to bring it out right now. So this is second Maccabees chapter six, and I'm going to read verse six. Get straight to the point. It says, Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to prof profess himself at all to be a Jew. Now, if you understand what was going on in the Maccabees era, they were being conquered by the Greeks. So if they couldn't call themselves Jews, then who would you call yourself? What would you call yourself? A Greek, because you conquered by the Greeks. It's, it's the same thing as living in America. Um, you could be Hispanic, Asian, black, whatever you want to, whatever you are, right? And what do you call yourself? American. It's the same thing that happened in, in the book of Maccabees. They had to call themselves Greek because they had to call themselves by the occupying, occupying nation. Okay, so let's get back to Galatians. This is verse 29. And it says, if ye be Christ... Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. All right. First things first. Romans 9, if you read Romans 9, 
It says how the promises are for Jacob. Does it say spiritual Jacob? It says according to the flesh, right? Promises are for Jacob. You can't just adopt somebody's heirs. If, if I have a, a rich family and that family leaves me a boatload of money, do you think that you could come and just be uh, a heir to the to 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 my riches? No, the, 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 no. It, the promises are made for Israel. They made for the seed of Jacob, right? This is what was promised to Abraham. Your seed, not your spiritual seed, not every, your seed shall receive these promises. Okay. So let's read it again and I'm going to get into it, right? It says, verse 29, and if ye be Christ, stop right there. If ye be Christ, again, if you believe in the Messiah, you would remember his words. If you have the Holy Spirit, you would remember his words. This is John chapter 17, verse 9 and 10. And verse 9 says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Who? Who are thine? Who, who are yours? Because he's speaking to the Most High right now. He's saying, I pray, for the, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I pray for them because they are thine, meaning they are yours. So who is the Most High's? Who belongs to the Most High? Let's keep reading, though. And it says, And all are mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. So, if this is a little bit confusing because it's King James, let me read it again. It says, <clears throat> and I'm going to read it where you can understand. It says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are yours, and all are mine are yours. And yours are mine, I and I am glorified in them. So who he's talking about that are yours, meaning the most highs. Whose are the most highs? Who belongs to the most high? Ready? This is Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Israel, the nation of Israel, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans belong to the Most High. The Most High have chosen thee. Let's get another scripture. This is Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou, and a, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So we see the Messiah is basically verifying this. He's quoting Deuteronomy. He's quoting the whole Bible about how Israel belongs to the Most High. Right? Now, let's go back to Galatians 3.29, well, ending in Galatians 3.29, right? It says, if ye belong to Christ, right? But 3.29 is the last chapter of the last verse of that chapter, correct? When Paul wrote Galatians, Romans, if he's, he didn't write it in chapters and verses. It was one straight letter, right? Each, each so-called book is a letter. He just wrote it straight through. So let's keep reading straight through, right? So we, we stopped at 329. Let's read 4. So this is Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 to 7. But when the fullness of time was come, God set forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Where, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. 
right? So it says, you are a son. You are the son. This is Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. Didn't Taylor Tequila, this dumb broad, say that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are not God's people? Here it goes. Um, and in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. So, the Israelites are the sons of the living God. Nobody else. Just Israel. Okay, this is Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Remember she said, all oh, because Jesus came and now everyone is included in the new covenant? No, let's read this. Hebrews 9, 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for, redemp for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Who was under the first testament? Israel. They which are called... The day which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Didn't, didn't Paul say, for you were called? Then who was supposed to be called? Israel. Why? Because they have the inheritance. They are the heirs of the promise, not the other nations. Matthew 15, 24 says, But I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's, you, you Christians, man, I tell you, one thing about you Christians is um, you don't let that ignorance go for nothing. That's that's one thing that I, I can honestly say, man. You guys, you guys are, are, are strong, bro, strong in, in hard headed, like not in an Israelite way, because but a lot of y'all all are Israelites. And I mean, you black, Hispanics, and Native Americans that are into Christianity. Yes, you are Israelite. And you are the ones that are, are being blinded by these pastors that are out for the buck. All right? So, let's move on. <clears throat> so, we covered the inward Jew and we colored, um, covered heirs in Christ, right? Woo! A chosen generation. <laughs> now Christians and Christians have been thinking this way is that they believe that the church is now the chosen generation, right? The church is now Israel. My God, there's so much scriptures that I could go into to, to cut this. All right, a chosen generation, right? Let's go. This is First Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. <laughs> a holy nation. How can a multi-ethnic church be a nation? That doesn't even make sense, man. A, a spiritual nation, right, I guess? Okay, whatever. Um, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you <laughs> out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, remember these words. A, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, right, that called you out of darkness. Remember those because the precepts that I bring out is going to have all of that in there. This is Exodus 19 and verse 6. And it says, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And that's what Peter's doing. He's speaking to the children of Israel. That's what Paul is doing. Speaking to the children of Israel. That's what the Messiah did, spoke to the children of Israel. This is Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the earth. 
This is Isaiah 42 and verse 7. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. So you're being called out of the darkness. Woo! Let's read 1 Peter 2 and 9 again. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So now you see who Peter was talking to. Israelites. You can't grab something from the New Testament without understanding what was written in the Old Testament. Once you do that, you're going off. You're, 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 falling, you're falling into the ways of the ditch, right? And you're being led into a ditch. All right, cool. This, is, this, this replacement theology stuff is getting cut fast. All right? So I want to go to the whosoever, right? Because you, you, if you read like John 3, 16, it will say whosoever, correct? But notice how people, when they, when they mention John 3, 16, they never mention John 3, 14, which gives you the context of what John 3, 16 is talking about. <laughs> but let's get Acts 2 and verse 16. And it says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So Paul is about to quote the prophet Joel, right? This is Acts 2 and verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, right? Funny thing is, is that when you read Paul's letters or when you read this Acts verse, he doesn't go into the full scripture that Paul, um, that Joel was talking about. So we have to go into what Joel was talking about, right? In order to understand what Paul was talking about, we got to read who he's quoting which is Joel. So let's get that. It's Joel 2 and verse 32. And it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So this is talking about Israel once again being saved. Israel. Right? <clears throat> and the remnant. Right? And the remnant. So let's see who the remnant is. This is Isaiah 11 and 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. So this is all about recovering and redeeming and delivering Israel as promised. Okay. <clears throat> Moving forward. Again, now I know Israel has short attention span, and if you clicked off on this video already, shame on you. Um, you should at least show some love and some um, obedience, and 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 try to restrain yourself from from that demon. You know what I'm saying? Listen to the scriptures that are coming out. This is your problem. A lot of y'all hate the scriptures. Especially when it contradicts your own belief, right? So now, I want to get into alienated strangers, which a lot of replacement theologists um, get that idea from Ephesians, right? So, and they get it from Ephesians 2 and 11 onward, right? So we're going we're gonna to read into this. 
<clears throat> so this is Ephesians 2 and verse 11. It says, Wherefore, remember that ye being in past time Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Now, if you don't know what the circumcision is in this verse, it's talking about the law. It's talking about those who keep the law. This ain't talking about the circumcision um, the, the foreskin, this is talking about keeping the law. And it's saying that those who keep the law call you who break the law Gentiles. So, why is Paul speaking about this? This is Joel chapter 3 verse 6. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their borders. So, remember, um, Gentiles in the flesh, right? You were called Gentiles in the flesh by those who were keeping the law. So, what this is talking about is that the Pharisees would always look at the other Israelites that were going off and call them Gentiles. Why would they call them Gentiles? Let's read. This is 2 Maccabees 6 and verse 1. And we're going to read all the way down to verse 7. And it says, uh, Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God. Verse 2. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympius. And that in Gerizim, of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in the place. Verse 3. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. Verse 4. For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles, who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places, and besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. Verse 5, the altar was filled with profane things which the law forbiddeth. Verse 6, neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So, you see, they couldn't even call themselves Jews. They were calling themselves Greeks. If you call yourself Greeks, you are a Gentile because you are keeping the Gentile customs. They couldn't keep their laws. They couldn't keep their ways. They had to um, um, conform to the ways of the Gentiles. So what happened? They became Gentiles. Verse 7. And in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in in, in procession to Bacchus. So, right? They had to... Um, conform to the ways of the Greeks. They had to conform to the ways of the Gentiles. Be a Gentile. Right? This is Hosea chapter 4 and verse 15. Though thou, Israel, play the harlot, yet let not Judah offend, and be and come not ye unto Gilgal, neither go ye up to Bethaven, nor swear the Lord liveth. So you see the division. Right? This is the division between the house of Judah and northern kingdom. They were split. They couldn't, they, because northern kingdom was going off, they were considered Gentiles by the circumcision, those who were keeping the law. Okay. This is 1 Maccabees 1 and 14. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. Verse 15. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. So you see in Ephesians 2 and 11 where it says you were called uncircumcised, uncircumcised by the circumcision, meaning the law, those who kept the law against those who broke the law. Oh, let's read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. So, 
because they were going off and not keeping the commandments, they were considered aliens and strangers to the commonwealth of Israel. This ain't talking about these other nations. This is talking about the Israelites that went off. Let's prove it. <clears throat> this is Psalm 69, verse 7 to 8, or verse 7. Because for the sake, because for thy sake I have borne reproach, shame, and have covered my face. Verse 8. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. This is a cut. Again, you cannot understand the New Testament if you're not reading the Old Testament. This is um, Hosea chapter 4, verse 17. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Cast him out. Let him be over there. We doing us over here. Let them do them over there. All right? Ephesians 2 and verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So <laughs> you who were sometimes far off, remember, they were off. Literally, they, they went off. Um, breaking the commandments, going into idolatry and everything. Literally, they went off. But literally, they were far off also. Watch. This is James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Man, you guys don't even read the New Testament. <clears throat> uh, this is Joel chapter 3 and 6 again. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that they that ye might remove them far from their borders. <clears throat> hmm. Let's read 2 Maccabees 6 and 6 again. It just, I got to drill this into your head. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So remember, they were calling themselves Greeks. They were calling themselves Gentiles. <clears throat> this is Ephesians, back to Ephesians 2.14. It says, For he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partitions between us. Now, if I haven't explained already the partition and why they would um, separate it, it's, 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 it has to be clear by now. They were breaking the law. You have one group that was not breaking the law, one group that was breaking the law. They were parted from each other, right? Now, watch this. It says... Um, I want to I want to go into what Paul is talking about, right? Because let's read it again. It says Ephesians 2:14. For he is our peace who have made both one. So Christ made both one. The strangers, the aid that were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and those who were in Israel keeping the laws. Right? Let's Now remember what I started off with saying that a lot of y'all don't believe in the Messiah. A lot of y'all, a lot of y'all hate the Messiah, really. Um, you ignore his words. You don't remember what he said because you don't have the Holy Spirit. But let's go into the Messiah because he is our Lord and Savior, us Israelites, according to Matthew 24, right? Matthew 15, 24. So let's read some of the Messiah's words. It says, this is John chapter 10, verse 16. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So he's saying he's going to bring both folds. So remember, when he came into Jerusalem, there was not all 12 tribes of Israel there. There was only but three tribes, and maybe a small remnant of northern kingdom. But all 12 tribes, <clears throat> all 12 tribes were not there. So we have to understand something. <clears throat> he says, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice. So he's saying, I got other sheep that are not here, but I have to bring them in that are outside. Right? Let's, I'm going to show you proof 
that the Messiah is talking about Israel and only Israel. He's not talking about bringing in Gentile nations, other, other nations in. He's talking about Israel. This is Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 16 to 17, because this is what Christ is talking about. Um, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick, one fold, right? And write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick, the other fold, and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another into one stick, one fold. And they shall become one in thy hand, one shepherd. Ezekiel chapter 37, 19 to 22. Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, one fold, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, the other fold, and make them one stick, one fold, and they shall be one in, in my hand, one shepherd. And the sticks where, whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, gather them from the heathens, who they were forced to follow and be, become like them, right? Whither they be gone, and will gather them, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation so no separation right the the middle partition is going to be brought together this is why he's talking about in ephesians and i will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of israel and one king shall be king to them all and they shall be no more two nations neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all Northern kingdom, southern kingdom. No more. It's going to be just one kingdom, which is the kingdom of Israel, the nation of Israel. All right? So, if you stuck around this much or this long, I want to thank you because I blew through this like always. Um, this is one topic that I feel very, very, very passionate about. Um, and I was just glad that uh, I was able to get into it and, and cut it and cut it to shreds. This is... This is no lie. This is replacement theology destroyed. And now, for the last verse that I want to bring out, or the last few verses that I want to bring out, I am not even going to go into a breakdown. I'm not even going to bring out precepts. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to read it like a Christian. And when I say read it like a Christian, I mean, I'm just going to read it at face value, right? I'm going to read it with Christian logic, um, which is face value. There's no breakdown in Christianity. They don't understand scriptures. At face value, with the scripture that I'm going to bring out, you, will, you would think, yeah, damn, Christians are right. But no. Because there's a full understanding of every scripture where you really need to break it down and understand it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the scripture or the scriptures just at face value, right? And I'm going to cut replacement theology with Christian logic. I hope that makes sense, okay? And the verses that I'm going to read or the chapter I'm going to go into is Romans 11, all right, remember, Christian face value logic, right? Let's read. And this is why I believe that Christians who believe in replacement theology never really quote this. Because if they did quote this, it, they will cut themselves with replacement theology, right? Ready? Here we go. This is Romans chapter 11, verse 17 to 21. And it says, And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. 
Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I may be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spare not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. So, in Christian logic, if replacement theology was a, a fact, a true thing, then why is Paul saying not to boast against the natural branches? If Israel is no longer um, to be dealt with, then why not boast against them? Let's read one more verse in um, Romans 11, and it's going to be Romans 1. Um, Romans 11 and 1. I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So all you Paulines that worship Paul, you even saying Paul they ain't even important. That Paul is even, hey Paul, you're done. Thank you for giving us these hard scriptures to understand, but you're even you're done. Bye, Paul. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Replacement theology destroyed. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for more. All praise to the Most High, man.